In a previous video, you might have seen me tear down and review this unit, an NPS 3010W, but there's been a new addition to the shop, the NPS 605W. Let's take a look. I planned for this to be a two-part video. One will be the general look and overview. It won't differ much from the uh, 3010 uh, variant. You can see the NPS 605W, 60 volts, five amps, still a 300 watt unit. But I purchased this to charge some 48 volt battery packs that I have. Instead of linking up my lab power supply, my Rigol for 60 volts and utilizing that, I'd rather just have something that's readily available and I can just throw it on and charge any sort of 48 volt battery pack. So that's why this one is now introduced into the shop. Done. Okay, the requisite items seem to be within the box. Again, we've got a European style power plug with a travel adapter, neither of which I use. Don't use these cables that come with the unit. They're aluminium core cable. They don't use any copper. They're just shit garbage. Very light duty. I'll show you a test shortly on how you can tell whether or not this is a copper core cable or a aluminium core cable. To determine the quality of the cables I just spoke about in the unboxing, there's a good test, an easy test you can do. Unfortunately, it's a destructive test, but once you uh, get a, a feel for how these cables um, look and feel, you can determine that either they're a fake or a low quality cable. Any high quality cable will have copper core, but in this case, lower quality cable will have uh, aluminium core strands that do look like they're copper colored. Here's the head of the cable I just showed you. I've now chopped it off. Let's have a close look and I'll show you the test. The blue cable on this side is the suspected aluminium core, and this is a known good copper cable on this side. So what we're gonna do is introduce a naked flame from a gas torch, and we'll see what happens. Take note of the aluminium core. And then we'll do the same with the copper core. You can already see a difference in the, in the reaction. The copper core will withstand the heat and the strands still maintain their shape, whereas the aluminium core just disintegrate into nothing. Hope you found that interesting. Okay, here's our NPS 60 or 605W and it's a spitting image of the 3010W, apart from the output, they're both identical units. Same interface as the 3010W, I'm not gonna to go too much into it. The banana jacks, we know that the banana jack ports are not at um, regulation spacing, so they're slightly less than 19.05 millimeters or three quarter inch. Uh, they're good enough for low current applications. The fit and finish, we'll take a four mil banana jack I'll just use these audio jacks for the, for the test. And yep, nice and tight and they do adapt nicely. Mind you, these are higher quality uh, banana jacks. Your lower quality jobs may not uh, fit in there so snugly, but any high current application, in fact, any application, you wanna make sure your connections are tight. Around the side, we have the spec sheet or the spec sticker, NPS 60 or 605W, W being meaning white unit, because you can get these in black. 300 watts, input voltage being 115 or 115 and 230 volts. Uh, output DC, zero to 60 volts at five amps. On the back, IEC connector, which is fused, voltage selector, depending on the country you're in, and fan inlet or outlet, probably an inlet. Other side, just some venting, nothing special to write home there. Let's take a look inside and uh, see how it looks. Okay, with the top case off, we can see automatically that this is very similar to the 3010 uh, variant. There would be slight differences in the power transformer here. Being higher voltage, you would expect this to have more windings and you would have a different switching element for the MOSFET over here as well. This one would only need to handle at least 60 volts 
with a little bit of an overhead and only five amp switching current. Uh, down here, we have two of the mains caps. Then again, Mr. and Mrs. Cheng who reside in the bottom corner of the PCB. Input side, we have a MOV, two uh, X or Y class capacitors, a common mode choke, a bridge rectifier, another uh, film capacitor by the look of it down there. And then we have a power integrations TNY277GN. As far as I can tell that is, yep, that's just the, the switching IC, basically the brains of the uh, power switching side. Some more filter capacitance on the output, two big current shunts and a massive buck coil. On the uh, other side is just a sheet of aluminium for the heat sink and inside we've got a spacing of about four or five millimetres um, between the terminations on the back of the PCB and the heat sink. I do recall my last review of the 3010. Some of these leads were extraordinarily long and uh, did or could have posed an issue to the heat sink for shorting out. That doesn't seem to be the case in this particular model. Mains cabling seems to be routed nicely from the bottom of the case. IEC connector through to the switch at the front. It's a mechanical clunk switch, which does the business and interrupts power supply to the high side of the filter. So when you do turn this on and off, it completely isolates the whole circuit. Okay, feedback monitoring seems to be done by these two little tiny transformers in the middle of the circuit here, rather than using an optocoupler. Not sure why they would have used that over an opt optocoupler, but it's an implementation that they've decided to use, so that's what it is. So on the back part of the board, we can see a marking wanttech.com or wanttech.com, who knows? It's probably lost its own identity because it's been rebranded that many times, even though we can see that it's a Minleaf product. The same is true for the front panel. We've got wanttech com and NPS W 1906. Don't know what the 1906 sort of represents because it's not actually, no, sorry, it's not 1906, it's 1908. You might better see that. There you go. So the display driver board has a TM 1640, which I believe is just the uh, seven segment display driver and the small micro up the top, which is the Nuviton brand and some local regulation and power. You can just see tucked in the back corner here, we've got some capacitors and some uh, linear regulators, or well, the top section of our board. Uh, let's get that in focus. We've got uh, two potentiometers, V and A. I would suspect that is for calibrating the front display to the output and making sure it's all speaking the same language. Down the bottom at the rear here, we can see big banana jacks, and their terminations, they seem to be nice and tight. Again, the same sort of quality as the uh, 3010, the back corner of the unit. Yeah, that's just our voltage select switch there. And a 12 volt DC fan. And it does seem to be blowing inwards. So it's taking air in from the rear, blowing across the circuitry and then out of the front, front vents as we would mount the case like that so the air would come in take all the warm air away from the internal circuitry and vent out the sides all right that seems to be all she wrote for the circuit it's very similar to the 3010 like i said the only main differences being in this case would be the main power transformer and the switching element for this particular unit what we will do now is check for earthing making sure the case is in fact earthed so we'll go to continuity on the multimeter on the back here. Okay, earth pin. And yes, we are, even the heat sink is earthed, earthed, everything's earthed. So that's good to see. Now the implementation of the earth, we can see down the back. Uh, where are we? We've got a screw connector right at the back with a crimp terminal. That seems to be okay. It is tight, it doesn't seem to be moving. And we've soldered on to the earth tab of the IEC connector, if we can see that there. Hopefully you can, there we are. Although the soldering job for the earth termination is pretty junk, to be honest. That might need to be redone. I'm not too happy with that at all. But all in all, 
the build quality and the circuit itself looks quite nice. I don't have any immediate thoughts as to its quality. They maybe could have used a little bit more Celastic, especially on this big heavy component, which is only held on by two leads ultimately. So you may get some issues there, but that, saying that, that seems very sort of robust. So it survived, or it did seem to survive the uh, transport from China to Australia. But uh, it is what it is. It would be easy enough to touch up those solder joints if, the, if in fact it was an issue. Okay, we've got some local logic, analog logic here, or analog search, circuitry. Analog and logic don't go in the same sentence, really. Okay, let's have a closer look and see what they are. Okay, the top I see there is a TL494. I believe that's a pulse width, width modulation uh, control IC. We've got two LM358s, so I hazard a guess that will be for our current control and our voltage control. So the LM358s are just op amps. Uh, dual op amps, I believe. Um, I'll have to look up the sheet. Uh, some electrolytic capacitors, cheap and nasty ones by the look of them, mostly 16 volts, a couple of 220s, and a 47 dotted around the place. A load of other passives. We've got two more potentiometers sitting at the top corner of the board here. You may be able to see them. One is marked A1 and the other one's V1. So I'm not exactly sure what they are or what they would be for. Then we've got two passives, um, capacitors up, well not capacitors, sorry, resistors up here, V2 and A2. I wonder if they are some sort of calibration uh, resistors there as well. Uh, anyone can shout out in the comments if they might know. And then we just have our data lines that are heading off to the front panel. Okay, so this is just a quick and dirty uh, initial video because it's very similar to the 3010W. So again, this is the 60 volt 5 amp version. I mainly purchased this for my shop so I can charge the 48 uh, volt e-bike battery packs rather than rely on the cheap and nasty uh, plug packs that come with them. So let me know in the comments below if there's any particular tests uh, and uh, items you want me to address in the next video. I will be looking at load testing and um, ripple and uh, see how this performs. Again, it's a cheap unit. It's, uh, it's fairly versatile, so I don't... Uh, expect it to break any sort of records but uh, if for, for someone starting out this is probably a great little unit 60 volts might be a bit too high depending on the type of work you're doing and what you might be uh, up to the 30 volt uh, 10 amp ver variant of this unit is also a great uh, starting point very clean it seems to be robust my 3010 unit i've had for a few months now i've definitely put it through its paces sitting up uh, at its max wattage for hours on end and keeps on ticking so i'd imagine the same will be true for this unit so yeah if anyone is looking for a cheap unit on banggood this could be a good one to go but yeah again thanks for watching any test you would like me to perform on this unit and put it through its paces put a comment in below and um, we'll get we'll get it going thanks for watching if you enjoy my content and want to see more reviews repairs and general maker stuff please consider subscribing and clicking that bell icon so you get notified when I upload new videos. Also consider following me on LBRY, otherwise known as Library, where you can find the exact same content while contributing to the channel. Thanks for watching.